after our first video should have informed you about general aspects of our project, the aim of this video is now to focus on explaining you step by step how the in vivo directed evolution process works in detail. Again, everything starts with a protein, or rather its related gene, in this case cytochrome C we already mentioned in our first video. The gene is put into the fast propagating bacteriophages that we produce in E. coli cells that cause mutations. So now, let's have a more precise look on what happens. First, the phages infect the E. coli cells and inject their genome. For directed evolution, you can't use the standard E. coli dough. To achieve a high mutation rate, the E. coli cells used are carrying a so-called mutation plasmid. When activated, it causes lots of mutations in the phage genome. Of course, they also take place in the DNA region, coding for cytochrome C, shown here in green. So now, three cases can take place. In the first scenario, mutations occur, but not in our green gene of interest. Thereby, activity of cytochrome C is not enhanced, and carbon-silicon bond does not form efficiently. In the second scenario, Mutations occur in our gene of interest, but they are insufficient, so cannot enhance activity of cytochrome C. Again, carbon-silicon bond does not form efficiently. In the last, the third scenario, there are helpful mutations in the cytochrome C gene that lead to efficient catalysis of carbon-silicon bond formation. So we finally have a new variant of the protein we can use for catalysis. But there is a problem. If this was the whole system, some phages might carry helpful mutations, but as all phages would reproduce and mutation keeps going, one could not find out which new gene variant are the helpful ones. So what we need to introduce into this system is a selection pressure. We only want those phages to reproduce that carry the efficient variant of cytochrome C. To achieve that, we are taking advantage of synthetic biology by using gene circuits. To make selection work, E. coli cells carry another plasmid, shown here in red. The yellow region on this plasmid stands for an essential phage gene we deleted from phage genome. It is coding for protein 3, which phages need for leaving hosts and infecting new cells. So, as a result, phages cannot reproduce by themselves but must activate expression of protein 3 in the infected E. coli hosts. Now, the trick is that we carefully designed genetic circuits in a way that those phages without an efficient variant of the evolving gene fail activating protein 3 expression. Phages with efficient gene variants can activate expression of protein 3. As shown by the red circles, the difference is clearly visible after the phages are built together. So phages with no or wrong mutations won't be able to leave their host to reproduce. In contrast, phages with helpful mutations are released, infect new cells and thereby propagate. So only the fittest gene variant of our proteins survives in the end. Now, let's have a closer look on how PACE and PRETZEL work, starting with PACE. PACE stands for Phage Assisted Continuous Evolution. To run it, you need several pumping machines, fermenters with oxygen supply, sensors and lots of tubes and medium. To simplify this, we will focus on the most important part of it. On the left hand side, you see a phage free cell suspension with a constant cell density. Fresh cells and medium are pumped constantly in and out of the so called lagoon where evolution takes place. We inoculate the lagoon with phages carrying our gene to be evolved. As described before, they infect E. coli cells and mutation starts. Phages without or wrong mutations infect E. coli cells and can't leave them, as shown by the orange cells. Over time, those cells will be washed out due to the constant outflow and will be replaced by new cells. 
In contrast, phages with helpful mutations, simplified by showing it in blue here, can reproduce and infect new cells before being washed out. The blue phage can then infect new cells and reproduce again. Nevertheless, new phage variants, shown in green, develop with even more helpful mutations and thereby can reproduce even faster. If you keep constant outflow in mind, it is easy to imagine that over time only those phages stay in the pot that reproduce faster than the others. At the end, in maturity, the variant with the most helpful mutations stays, represented by the red phage. Worse phage variants are mostly washed out into the waste pot and are only barely present in the lagoon. Wetzel, in full phage-related discontinuous evolution, is based on the same principle, but without constant flow allowing us to make the whole process much easier. As in pace, we again infect E. coli cells with our phages carrying the gene to be evolved. While flasks are shaking, phages are entering the cells. The phages' genomes are mutated and variants with potent mutations can reproduce. We then take a little amount of the phages from flask 1 and are transferring them into a second flask. Through this dilution, we make sure to leave inefficient phage variants behind. Repeating this process of phage propagation of potent variants and dilution at the end, we again get the phages with the most helpful mutations. So now the gene can be isolated, protein expressed and used for your approach. And that's it! Thank you for listening and don't forget to start your own evolution.